right, so we're going to open up tonight's uh, board meeting at 6 o'clock. First order of business, we have to reorganize the board before we can do any voting or discussing or anything else. Um, Were you sworn in, Candace? Yes. Yay! This morning. Welcome aboard. Thank you. Uh, um, I'm going to entertain the idea uh, that we stay to where we are as me, Chairman, Pam, Vice Chairman, Co Chairman, what do we call it now? Oh, whatever. And Candace? Candace. I didn't want to mess it up. That's okay. As clerk, um, I cannot make a motion if anybody has any discussion about it or anything or want to change anything. Okay, so I'll motion to um, have Steve remain as chair, myself as co chair, and Candace as clerk. And I will second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Now that we've gone through that little thing. So, let's start. Let's see if the gentleman here. Do we want to start with Clyde's Bob and kind of release everybody? No. No. No? Okay. No, let's go in order, please. All right. Health agents reappointment. Who here thinks Bob should stay? Aye. Aye. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna entertain, I'm gonna entertain uh, the fact that Bob, if he would like to, stays on in the board, so just need a... Um... Be a privilege. Huh? It's by privilege. By privilege? Yeah, I'm okay. more than happy to. All right, so who wants to make a motion? Keep Bob. Apparently I can't make motions, is what I found out today. Once, oh. I can only... a three-person board, Okay. what happens is Steve will entertain a motion, sure. and then either one of the respective uh, you know, chair or uh, clerk can say, I would like to motion. So, okay, sure. Um, yeah. If we're all on the same motion, then Steve would say, like on the next one that's coming up for Plymouth Street, I'll entertain a motion. Somebody says, I'll second it and okay. then I'll for it. Okay. Um, so I would like to motion that we uh, reappoint Bob Valerie as the health agent. I will second that motion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Welcome aboard, Bob. Thank you. <laughs> All right. So we recommend disposal work permit 416 430 Plymouth Street. Went for approval. Ratify agent's approval. Uh, Wood Street 118-6, recommended for approval by review engineer, ratify agent's approval. Wood Street 118-7, recommended for approval by review engineer, ratify agent's approval. 407 South Street, recommended for approval by review engineer. Ratify agent's approval with the condition an observation hole is dug at the time of excavation. And Fuller Street, Mass 131 L-16A, recommend for approval by review engineer, ratify agent approval, with condition of proof of water service. Anything to uh, add to any of that, Bob? Um, 416 and 430 Plymouth Street is really a win-win situation. We had had multiple complaints from the owners on Putters Way. For anybody who's not familiar with the site, Basically, all the pumping comes from Rodney's Pizza. It goes all the way up and behind and ends up on Putter's Way, Fairview, uh, yeah, Fairway's Edge there. Oh, uh, yeah, the guy who owns a business time. Yeah. Exactly, you know. So, luckily, we were able to perform tests and they're moving it back onto his property. So, where the old septic was, on an easement on this lady's front yard, or the old lady and gentleman's front yard, um, will just be abandoned and it will be off their yard and they won't have to worry about breaking So, where's the new system going? Up by the car wash or up by the uh, It's going actually uh, just behind the car wash up okay. in that area. They're taking right, so the car wash. So, he, mu he must be happy and this is going to save us a lot that. of legal he fees. Be after tonight. <laughs> You know, and so will the owner, because the owner's been pumping like crazy, so. Yeah, yeah. You know, um, 
That's tough. And then the reason why um, I asked for a test hole on South Street was um, within our files, um, I couldn't find Kathy's test logs to match Joe Webby's. Okay. So when I spoke with uh, Joe Webby, he said, well, Kathy went home sick that day and never was able to finish off. Um, Mr. Diaz had shown up, but he only showed up for one of the test holes. All right, yeah, so make so, it a little more official. Exactly. Get, get, I, I just want to confirm, I know what the soils are in that area, but it's not un, unusual for them to say, okay, you're digging this hole, dig it 12 feet deeper, and I'll ensure that the uh, soil logs are now. Okay. Sounds good. All right, he had an entertain that we, uh, we move as red. Okay, um, so, and I should read all the items, right? Um, to move? You can um, do either or. Um, the next time you shoot through them one at a time and do them, or just say. Um, right. Yeah, I'll I'm read learning. them all. Okay, well, I move to approve um, 416 to 430 Plymouth Street, Wood Street 118 6, Wood Street 118 7. 407 South Street and Fuller Street M-131 L-16A. I second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Discussion items. Candace Green would like to discuss the possibility of changing the meeting time back to 630. I'm so sorry. I feel like I'm being such a pain on my first meeting. Um, I know that's when you guys I don't to me, and it's really hard for me to get here for six. I had to leave early. I could do six on another night of the week, perhaps, but Wednesdays is really tough to get here by six. Um, so, I mean, I think Wednesdays is probably the best night for, I, I mean, that's what it's always been, right, for the Board of Health staff? It has been. It's uh, no concern to me what day of the week it is, uh, not Friday. Uh, what's your opinion, Pam? It doesn't matter. Doesn't matter? Yeah. So do you want to just, I mean, the, I don't want to use the word job, the position was advertised at 6.30, so if you're fine with it, yeah. I, I'm fine with it. I apologize. I, no, that's no, what I no, thought no, it was. I thought it was 6.30, so, yeah. and then I felt bad no, when I saw it changed. Don't be sorry. No. It was, hey, I got my six tonight. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That doesn't have to be voted. Yes, because it was voted on a change. Right. Uh, so I'm going to entertain that we move the um, meeting time back to 6.30 on Wednesdays. And I move to change the meeting time back to 6.30. I second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thanks, guys. All right, Bob, let's talk about porta parties Does Clyde's tree or Zero Monponte require porta party? Well, do we have anybody working there? Excuse me? Do we have anybody working at either property? Um, so at Cleds, up until Monday, I haven't observed anybody at their property. Um, okay. At Zero Mon Ponset, I haven't observed anybody at their property since the um, six, eight so site visits that I've done there. So, uh, so I mean, if we have nobody there, it doesn't really make a whole lot of sense to buy them and have a porter party. I mean, and there's no requirement by any regulation or anything for those specifically um, uh, permitted or whatever locations that would require anything like that. So, the board did, the previous board <coughs> sent a letter to class that stated that if there were going to be on site workers, they need to have the porta potty. To the best of my knowledge, they already had a porta potty there even before that was asked. Well, actually, a letter that said they had to stop workers from being there <laughs> because they wanted a better sanitary facility. So, that's uh, when there was discussion as to. Is a porta potty good enough, or is a porta potty not good enough? Yeah, I mean it's it's always been the way it was. I mean, it, construction sites have porta potties. They have self uh, sanitary uh, dispensers. They have soap dispensers. I mean, I, I, 
I remember pack discussions. I'm, I'm not going to make them bring in a beauty trailer. Um, but in any event, if there's nobody there and the code, I mean, go ahead, sir. Uh, Chris Wilkes, 129 Circuit Street. They do have employees regularly off and off working. But mean, I've had videos for months ago that had up to 10 employees working there all day, multiple days, doing firewood processing, uh, chipping. And in fact, I think Monday they were there running the big grinder all day. And uh, just so you know, the press um, called in a, a noise complaint um, on Monday. Monday, so yeah, Monday. Monday that I responded to. Um, if I could ask you to hold for a minute, only because um, anything that you want to say, you have to say, certainly bring up. Right now, if we can stay on target with. The porta potty discussion. Um, then we can have a vote on it. All right, if so we bring in any other concern um, other than that, it's part of reasonable discussion. Granted that Cleds is Cleds, um, so that way there we won't get jumbled in between the two. So yep. we we'll keep it as two separate items. Yeah. Yeah. One topic first, one topic second. So, so where did this come from? Is Cled saying they don't want to have one there anymore? Are they refusing? No. Or are we just... We're just trying to see if those two properties, similarly, if there's a requirement that they should, you know, both, if it should be enforced basically at zero among concepts as well. Right. But if we have no... So here's the issue. You're saying nobody's there. You're saying people are there. It, you're clearly missing people or whatever. So, I mean... Do, I almost think we err on the side of caution and just make them have it. They've had it, why not just keep it going? For both. For both. So I don't yeah, be, yeah. Because if we tell one you have to, the other one no, it's, we're going to start a new, well, I don't have any people here. He has people here. No, he doesn't. And all of a sudden we run into a, you know, a, a big you know, rat race. Right. And I also, I don't have a site plan for the Zero Mon Ponset Street. Right. Site. So at this point in time, I'm going to have to assume that we're, um, well, I'm, yeah, that it's apples to apples, right. not apples to oranges. Right. You know, um, and there's nothing clear um, as far as stating an absolute code from the Board of Health, except in the scope of what we do, it's <laughs> human health and environmental concerns. Right. So therefore, if you're going to have workers on site for a period we of time, have them. they should have a porta potty. Okay. Um, if it was, hey, I'm running here for 10 minutes because I just refilled my truck. I, you know, with gas or something. No, they can get to a restaurant. Okay. But if there's going to be work performed on site, I would recommend using All right, so it's, it's my recommendation that we uh, we we keep the porta potties at both sites. Um, I move to uh, require a porta potty at both sites, Zero Monponset and uh, Cleds Tree Service. I second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Ooh. E. coli. Nope. Nope. Administration report. No, Mr. So now you want to start Lennox. skipping over. <laughs> I'm sorry. I just I wanted to make sure that we had two separate things. This would have been posted um, on the agenda. However, I didn't get the call um, can it, until Monday night. Can it be discussed where it's not on the agenda? Yes. Okay, because it's the same property, we cannot vote on it. And I did give a recommendation as to how I think we should move forward on this. Now, if the board disagrees um, with either discussing the, the noise complaint or not, is your prerogative. But um, Chris has been at other meetings. And as a citizen of the town, he's taken his time to come down and you know, be here, so I, no, I, I would entertain um, not a long discussion, but at least the, the 
points that it has on, on target. Yeah, I mean, I'm personally fine with that. I mean, and if everyone wants to, obviously we can't vote on anything tonight. Right. No. Um, so, if, you know, we can all digest what's said, read through the information, and um, put it on the agenda for the next meeting and, you know, kind of do anything formal at that point. Exactly. Okay. And if Chris did, we did both have a question, yeah, we yeah. Put and that'll, board. yeah, that'll give us more time too to kind of read through, like you said, digest instead of on your kind of reading it and trying to put together. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. right. But he yeah. had, um, you know, he has had concerns um, in the past. Um, I was able to be on site and and witness uh, for a period of time. Um, you know, the noise that's coming from him. And uh, I would have to say that uh, he certainly should be entertained uh, moving forward, whether it be from us or any other board that may be involved in this particular piece of property. So you have the floor, sir. You just have to state your name and address again. Uh, Chris Winowitz, 129 Circuit Street. Uh, this has been ongoing for about pre-COVID, so maybe a year and a half, two years. Uh, I've never had a problem with Cleds as long as he's been there. Industrial Park, I've lived here about 35 years. Until we got what's generally referred as a tub grinder, where they put giant logs and waste wood and everything in it, and you can hear this machine up to a mile away. Uh, inside the house, you can hear it like reverberating in your ears. And I I, re I remember having this discussion, you know, previously. I I think there was a noise. It, it, I think it had just started at that point. Yes, pre-COVID. Uh, I think it was Martin Luther King weekend, right before COVID started last spring. Uh, he was operating it all the time, up to seven days a week, and it it's kind of died off because with the COVID, and I know it. A lot of other issues ran into there. He hasn't been operating it, but he just started operating again this Monday. So it's kind of brought it back to light, light again. Out of curiosity, what kind of hours is he running it? Uh, I'd say eight in the morning to 4.35. But previously it was seven days a week. But right. I've also done research and it looks like it's, that machine's not allowed in any district going to our bylaws and I've spoke to the DEP last year because it falls under noise pollution. So I would actually think, Bob, wouldn't this fall under zoning? Well, that's why um, when you guys have a chance to digest uh, my recommendations, okay? okay. Um, the best way to a solution to anything that we do in this town is through collaboration. We have resources whether it be a planning board, whether it be a zoning board, whether it be police, whether it be fire, that collectively should be able to come to a resolve on this situation before we have to involve DEP. So, um, that having been said, yes, we grab our resources from there, we grab our resources from here and we say, okay, so what part of this doesn't fit. Our part that does fit is whenever there's a noise nuisance complaint, yeah, that's what DEP says to call, the Board of Health. Yeah, so I remember, it starts with us and then we go from there. Well, I just remember years and years ago having a dog that barked and my neighbor was different at that time. and. Um, I remember the cops coming and saying, you know, it's a nuisance. So it's like, because one person complained, you're like, I got 20 neighbors around me. And they said, if somebody complains, it is considered a nuisance and you can be dragged to court. So aren't we on the same? I mean, we've got a machine instead of a dog, but we're kind of on the same playing field, right? right. Okay. There are certain exclusions 
that if your neighbor just happens to like to mow his lawn at 8 o'clock in the morning every Saturday, mm. guess what? You don't have to be <laughs> shot at it, okay? Right. He's allowed to do that. Right. And that's so residential, that, too. Like, I think, I don't know the difference between residential well, properties and then industrial and... Well, that's that. why I, I had mentioned, you know, is this more zoning? And, and I, I agree with everything you yeah. said, Bob, because... Although he's in a residential area, down at the bottom of that hill is basically, that's where, uh, it's in with Liddell's and everything, correct? Yeah, it borders the high tension lines right next to the wetlands. Right. So it's considered commercial area at that point, correct? But our definition, our bylaws for light industrial use, not industrial. We have light is industrial. Light. Okay. Uh, an industrial enterprise such as manufacturing, storage, processing, Fabrication, packaging, and assembly that does not create a nuisance from noise is one of them. A little bit ironically, that particular piece of property that you're talking about, last week when we were saying about do we have to do a soil evaluation because of the elevation, Right. may actually lead to the amount of noise that could be getting up there because the flip side of not having water up there is that noise travels that way. And it doesn't seem to be a lot of buffer zone. No. So, um, no. you know, it, no. it, it I guess something it, that needs a lot of research. Yeah, I definitely agree right something should be done. I mean, nobody should have to live in their house and you know, have walls shaking and can't get a TV or have headaches or anything else. You know, <laughs> I, I definitely agree something's got to be done. Um, I was going to say, too, because from the DEP I got, they empower the town to start taking care of it first between Board of Health, Police, and other departments. Yeah. yeah. Under the CMIs and... That's in their packet. Yeah. Just so you know. Okay. Yeah, I just would have never thought that the Board of Health would have been the... But... We, but we are the... Have you the talked... First have you talked to uh, any of the chiefs or anything, Bob, about this? Has it come up with anybody at this point? For noise? Yeah. No. Okay. I didn't know if um, the chief went down there. I, I keep thinking Teddy, but it's not Teddy anymore. Um, went down there. Would it kind of maybe? I, again, I'll start to incorporate them if uh, okay. if we make that. You know, it, it, at least if we can start to move forward with doing something. I think right now, um, basically. Um, you're not getting much response, um, if any, from the town. And I think we're at least obligated to, to do what we can within the uh, current uh, rules, regulations, and laws and, and um, tap our resources to try to give you a hand. I agree. They've already uh, made ways to the fire department, so let's, uh, let's, let's see what you can put together. Yeah. And see what kind of, uh, we'll, we'll start nice and, you know, I mean, if it ends up having to escalate up the ladder, we'll escalate. Mm -hmm. Sound good, sir? Yeah. I just also wanted to show, because I spoke to the fire chief the other yep. day, and sometimes there's people have a misconception that we're far away, and if you look at Google Maps, it looks like there's buildings, trees that all would In block between. all the noise. But what I explained to him is that our neighborhood on our side of the street is at the top of a hill, about 60 feet up, about 106. Right. So, I don't know if you want me to show. Yeah. So from the back, yeah, there's absolutely no divide. There's all this log spot stacked. And, there, and this is your fence of your backyard here? Yeah, 106 is oh, 60 feet down. So we're at the top of the hill, and there's no barrier to sound. So it's just shooting lines. sound right up here. Yeah, and I think the grind is over here. But this is all a stack of wood right here. Yeah, no, that's something's got to be done about that. Some people don't see that driving through the neighborhood that we're yeah. not that high. Right. Yeah. No, I, I definitely agree. Uh, I'm sure Bob is going to. Yeah, I, I'll have to uh, I'll reach out to the, uh, I say we, we you know, do what DEP recommends. Try to handle it internally. Give Fred every opportunity. Okay. To say, okay, yeah. this is how, how can he make it better? And what I'm doing, this is where it is, um, you know, where my, my grind is located, is there a buffer or not? I mean, if his grinder, according to your backyard, happens to shoot straight across, hey, 
with a little bit here. Yeah, can't you put like a lean-to or something behind so it or something to buffer it? Yeah, yeah. Let's, uh, you know, let's all work together. <laughs> not make a, a and like I out of a mohill. Or, you know? I said I'm not against his business. I love his business there. I mean, he was there, I think, way longer before he ever got this piece of equipment. Never heard him in the industrial park. Didn't even know he was there. Yeah, but no, it, it's all I mean, from friendly this neighbor here. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's no way for you and your family to live. Yeah. Uh, so. We'll figure out something in the middle. Okay. Mm -hmm. At least we'll look smaller. <laughs> yeah. I'll get it. Hopefully, get it done. Well, thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, right, Bob. Talk to us about the beach. How's it doing? Beach. The okay. beaches. E. coli testing. Last week was good. I got a uh, preliminary results today in the Halifax Beach, which is off Lincoln Street, um, has an initial test that's just above um, the recommended level. So um, I'll get official confirmation tomorrow that beach actually might have to be closed. How's the Fourth Ave Beach? Perfect. A, <laughs> Way lower. It's well, like it's just funny because they're only what a couple hundred feet apart. I was just gonna say, aren't they really uh, close? So, it, so now, okay, so you're a couple hundred feet apart, and, and here, here's where everything plays into it. Okay, um, that be, you, the Fourth Street Beach has been used, and people are there, this and that. What I've observed over on the other beach um, is. Oh, a lot of ducks, dog uh, crap on the side. So we had torrential rains. Anytime after torrential rains, guaranteed you're going to wipe all that stuff will in the go water. Up. But especially because of the downflow from Lincoln Street right there, it, it would push any debris, anything that's in the... Um, Make sure that the catch basins are okay. That's something I can ask the water department. But I would think that that would be why. And like I said, slightly elevated level. Um, if anybody had been swimming, is swimming, as long as you're not drinking the water and you don't have open wounds, you're not going to get sick, okay? I mean, they're slightly elevated. This is just where the state says. Hey guys, yeah, you can go in the water, but you need to use water precautions. We obviously post it. So if the results come back positive to what they sent me uh, tonight, I got them at like 5 o'clock, um, tomorrow morning we'll post that particular beach, which is a private beach anyway. So. Now, how's the other side doing? 36 and Anna 1? They're all great. All great, just that one? Absolutely. That's good. All right, the rabies clinic. How do we end up with that? Uh, Peggy's still working on getting a source to do it. It's hard to get somebody uh, to confirm. Um, I don't know. Other if... areas. So we may just have to stick with, you know. Well. Unless we just bypass it for the year again. That's just they it. do that too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but it's not really going to be worth it. Right. We can't do a weekend. It, yeah, yeah like, if it doesn't like you know, come around like soon, then it's already we, we passed our point. Right. How's COVID doing? Hey, we want to sign up for their million dollars? <laughs> right now, um, things are going very well. Uh, the uh, opportunity for anybody who uh, has done their um, their research, check with a physician, and um, is capable of having a vaccination. Um, they don't have to worry about going to Gillette. They're actually starting to do a lot of um, off-site work. Kingston has just opened up um, some, like at their farmers market. So there's a lot of different areas where is you can get. Bridgewater still doing it. The university. Excuse me? Is the university still doing yes, it? Yes, they yeah. are. Yes. But, uh, you know, again, um, you know, the, the, it has shown that we've, we've dropped rates with vaccinations, but it's, it's critical that somebody knows that they get informed information, they check with their doctor, and make sure that they're the right candidate 
for a vaccination. Otherwise, follow the recommendation. Stay six feet away. Wash it. You still should be washing your hands. Why they had to start with COVID, but anyway, <laughs> and, then, um, and wear a mask. So let's uh, all work together. And what uh, what color are we in now? Are we in? Oh, it's still yeah, the whole states. Good. Permits? Permits. Oh, wow. You know, um, while we're under agent discussion, we would have to have a hearing to change the last meeting we talked about getting a potential price for single cigars. Yes. We approved that they could open up their shop um, for them to do that. So um, should we post a public hearing saying that we're going to have um, discussion on a price point to allow um, single, we'd have to change the bylaw is what happens. I believe Peggy was already working on that. Well, that's what she said, but we didn't vote <laughs> to say that we would um, actually do it or... Uh, Was there another thing sense. we were talking about too for a hearing? There's, yes, yeah. so in, in order to um, save cost, we could also wrap in any potential fees that we did want to change. A couple of the fees that we had discussed were, um, should there be a raise for an industrial um, you know, disposal works for them. Should there be a reduction in a um, event? You know, okay. so, yeah, we um, talked about re yeah. potentially right. reducing that, right. So, um, we could just list them. We don't even have to list them individually. We could have a fee hearing and a and the cigar hearing. And, at least that way there, we don't have to have two hearings, right. two postings, um, two newspaper ads, um, and the public would be invited. Now, as, as far as the fees go, I mean, what's everyone's opinion? I mean, are we way lower? I mean, is it worth raising all the fees? I mean, it's... Oh, no, absolutely not. I mean, if anything, the, the only two fees that I see is lowering um, the fee for mobile trucks so that they can conduct business in town without having to pay $250 for a year-long license. And then just potentially um, a slight increase for a, um, a commercial or industrial fee. But we really don't do so many of those. It's probably not even necessary. So do we need to lower a fee? Do we need a, um, does that need to be, I mean, who's gonna, who's gonna argue the lowering of a fee? No, I think it's just procedure though, right? That we would it's have the, to have yeah, a exactly. about it's it. It's just a procedure to say, hey, we're gonna drop this fee. So I could bundle that into the cigar one. Okay. And then we could do both at the same time. And it's like a no brainer. Yep. <coughs> and th those would be the two things I'd put on here. That would be it. All right. Sounds good. All right. Yay. That's it. I'm done talking. Talk too much. Now, does that have to be? No, it doesn't have to be voted on. Um, no, not to have a hearing. Okay. Uh, all right, so the following permits we have. John P. Jenkins doing business as John's Dogs and More, the Field Seals, Field Sewing Show Park, July 3rd, 21st, and August 21st. <clears throat> Joseph D. Francesco, Jeff the Dip, 2021 Mobile Food Seasonal Permit. Walter Wonder, Alden Park, 2021 Mobile Food Seasonal Permit, Fieldstone Park. 
Twin Lakes package 2021 food establishment retail food and nicotine, nicotine sales permit. Scott Unni, Unignan, Prime Time 2021 Septic Installers Permit. Michael J. Carter, GCG Associates Incorporated, 2021 Soil Evaluators Permit. Kyle DeVenish, Outback Engineering, 2021 Soil Evaluators Permit. Jason Jungwist, Outback Engineering, 2021 Soil Evaluators Permit. Dana Jr., 2021 Installers Permit. So, one question I have is the Twin Lakes package even have a um, occupancy permit yet? I mean, I think you need that before you can give them a permit to sell things. What is it? Twin Lakes package, it's over on the Hanson Halifax line on 58. Does Twin Lakes even have an occupancy permit yet, Bob? They don't even have a septic system. Well, yeah, they do have septic. Oh, they have a new one put right. in? Right, and he came in today. Um, he's going to be, um, let's see, he's got um, a tobacco permit application and then his um, food establishment um, application. All the food that he's going to sell, though, will be the same um, prepackaged products that are uh, carried at the mobile station down here. Um, there'll be no milk, probably, and um, probably a small novelty ice cream. You know. But how about the occupant? Did you have the occupancy permit? That will come from the building department. So can we give him a permit to sell before he has an occupancy permit? Yeah. Okay. All right. I just wanted to... But he can't get in there. Yeah, so. well, that's why I just wanted to make sure I would put in the cop before the horse. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Alrighty, um, I'm going to entertain that we move as read articles one through or permits one through nine. Um, I move to approve uh, items one through nine. I second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I gotta check with this field stone place. I know, I was thinking the same thing. <laughs> oh, they did the taco truck there. <laughs> and... Well, that's part of um, why I, I was saying about the fees for um, these trucks, okay? It's revenue into the town. So the sales that they do at Fieldstone, the mass sales tax gets for meals tax. The state gets five cents, and we get two cents. So, for every sale that they make over there, there's two more cents to the town. Huh. So, everybody just thinks that mass sales tax goes to Massachusetts. No, the towns are also involved. So, every time that you have a food establishment or a truck like that, um, providing that their records are accurate, we're bringing the revenues into this town. Um, and you tend to make your dollars, pennies at a time. That's my philosophy. <laughs> um, so, um, you know, the more we can do to encourage um, people, you know, to, to go there um, or to go to whatever event might be around. Uh, it could even be the car show on a Friday night. Um, the better it is for them. And one of our discouragements is that $250 year long fee definitely have a year-long fee versus a one-time event. But 250 was a little steep, so, yep. you know, it might. Right, I agree. All right, so, Kelly, I don't believe I can sign this because my name is spelled wrong. Um, uh, for the health involvement, for Delano and Spath, Delano and Spath, You could, you could initial it pending um, 
Okay. Name approval. Uh, yeah, yeah. Some, for some Can reason, somebody added it. Can he just correct it in initial? Yeah, you probably could just correct it. Just you can probably pretend correct it. Like it's a check. Initial yeah. and then. That's okay. The other day when I got an email, it said to Sean McFarland. From <laughs> I'm like, hey, that sort of matches. Uh, Sean McFarland. <laughs> Might change your name, Louis Steve. Alrighty, All right. we're going to close the meeting of the Halifax Board of Health at 641. Alright, where do I put on the side? <laughs> That's okay. So she makes a little. Things usually, but you're gonna sign. Well, yes, yeah, so that's just payroll. So you don't? I don't need to sign that. No. <laughs> the Pam usually helped me out with that. With what? We've, we've got the form in place. Like they to make them, uh, like to entertain the fact that we close the meeting at 6:41. Oh. <laughs> oh, at the second? Oh no, I. Oh, you entertained. I'm sorry. Um, I move to close the meeting, 641. I second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Sorry.